because today we're talking about our final installment of our Want More series. It has uh, been an awesome time where we get to learn more about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we talked about in the first week how, you know, there's a lot of misunderstandings about the Holy Spirit. You know, we've, some of us have heard it mentioned as the Holy Ghost. So it sounds kind of freaky. Some of us have heard weird things here and there. But it's been a great time, and I'm going to recap the rest of that in a moment. But it's good to learn about that third person of God, the Holy Spirit. Now, does anybody in here have an independent personality? So me and one, two others. All right, thank you. So some of us are very independent. I have an extra dose of it. You know, at 16 years old, I, uh, I lived on my own for two months in the middle of Vienna, Austria. Now, you can imagine how cool that is for a 16-year-old guy to live in a big city by himself for a summer. It was awesome. I'm, I was just always been pushing the limits. Went out and got a job as soon as I was legally able to. Wouldn't let my parents pay a bill. I'm not saying that to be all cool. It's just that I wanted to be independent. I wanted to do stuff on my own. And I remember one time uh, in 2008, I moved to Vienna, Austria to uh, start working with youth ministry there and, and do missions work. And, of course, that same pattern of trying to be independent followed me. So, of course, I was trying to learn the language and everything. So, uh, one, one uh, weekday, I decided I thought my language was good enough. And uh, I needed a haircut. So, I'm like, okay, that's basic, right? Anybody can go get a haircut for themselves, right? You know, so, being Mr. Independent, didn't take anybody that could help translate. Thought I had it on my own. So I go to this barber shop right up the road from the church where I was at, and um, the lady there was doing somebody else's hair, and I asked her what time should I come back, and she said, half three. Okay, half three. So that must mean 3.30, right? Um, so I come back at 3.30, and she explained to me half three meant 2.30, like, okay, great, I'm losing today to get my hair cut. And so there was a pattern that went on for a couple of days like this. I'm trying to get my hair cut with this lady, and we're missing the mark with the communication every time. So one day I just got so fed up that I'm like, you know what, there's another barber shop in the train station. I'm just going to go there. Surely they can work enough with my uh, broken German and maybe enough English to get the point across. And uh, little did I know that that was one of the more fancy salons. So I go in there and get my hair cut. I explain, I just, I'm trying to say, I just want the basic haircut. I just want my hair short, just like this, okay? So the lady takes me back in the chair. She starts doing the stuff on my hair. And all of a sudden, she's rolling the chair I'm in over and like, dipping me down into the sink. And I'm tripped out. What's going on here? She's shampooing my hair and trying to do all this other stuff. And I just say, stop, stop, stop. Give me the bill. I got the bill, and it's like 50 bucks. It's like, what in the world? All this to say, instead of just asking the many friends I had for some help, what I do? I was just Mr. Independent. Tried to do something on my own. That would have been no problem to ask for help. I think most of us like to be independent to a point. Some of us are independent to a fault like me. But, you know, there's other things where, you know, we're tackling stuff so big, we may be tempted to want to do it on our own, but we know that we've got to have help. We know that we have to have God with us to be able to do it. When I first started that journey to be a missionary, you know, we had to, as a missionary in our church fellowship, you have to go out and raise your own money. So that means you're going from church to church, asking, please support me monthly. You're going to your friends and your family. And uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to raise, I don't know, $500 a month. I'm a single guy. I don't need anything. So we get the thing when I first started the process. I had to raise $2,000 per month and $12,000 cash. Okay, for a 18-year-old guy right out of high school, <laughs> I, it, it, my family, I have no well-off family members. So it's not like I could go to grandma and she could do half of that. It wasn't happening with just my family. This was a monumental task, and on top of that, they needed me there within nine months. And most missionaries, it takes two years to raise their support. Monumental task. There was no way I could do that on my own. I had to have 
God's help. Now, we've been talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, that God sends us his Holy Spirit. Today, we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit works in us, how he empowers us to do his work. First week, we looked at just who is the Holy Spirit? How does he operate? We looked at what does it mean when we talk about the Holy Spirit and God's presence. And then we looked about how he, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. And then after that, we looked about how we can communicate with God because the Holy Spirit's living within us. We can have a relationship with God and communicate, not just to, we're sending our prayers and hoping God hears us, but we can have a real two-way relationship with God. And then last week, we looked at how the Holy Spirit comes in and transforms us, helps us to be more like Christ. So now we're going to wrap that up, and we want to look at the power of what the Holy Spirit does through us. Now, when some of you guys hear this, you hear power of the Spirit, it brings up probably a lot of different ideas. For some of us, we're thinking about great experiences we had growing up. Maybe we grew up with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're thinking about those great times. Others of you are thinking, okay, power of the Spirit. I've heard something like that, but I have no idea what you're talking about. But then there's some of us in here who are like, okay, this is about to get weird. Okay, Sally, you good with the jet? No. But uh, there's a, we've seen weird things on TV. Maybe we've been in a situation to where, you know, you see people falling out and speaking in tongues and waving flags and raising hands and all this stuff. And to you, it gets a little weird. I get it. All right? I'm not going to get weird on you. I promise. I, I grew up in a lot of that. Uh, even when I was a kid, I saw um, some preacher had laid hands on my dad, and he fell out in the spirit, what they called. In other words, he experienced a strong touch of God, and he looked like he had passed out. And I was eight years old, and it scared me, and I ran and hid for two hours. I get that that, that stuff could get a little weird and scary, but I'm not going to get weird and scary on you, I promise. But I want to talk about what the Bible says about what the Holy Spirit wants to do, not just in us, but through us. If you're new to a relationship with Christ, or maybe you've been following Christ for a while, and there was more to it, wouldn't you want the fullness of what God has for you? Wouldn't you want to grab onto everything that God wants to give you? We've seen in this series that God wants to have a personal relationship with us through his Holy Spirit. He wants us to have a relationship that's growing and vibrant. And the Holy Spirit is such a huge part of that process. All right, Let me, can I get theological just for a second? I want to explain something. Just, just set up a premise of what we're going to talk about the rest of, of today. When we're talking about the Holy Spirit, theologically, there's what's called four works. Okay, in other words, four things that the Holy Spirit does. The first thing that the Holy Spirit does, it's called conviction. In other words, if, you, if you've ever felt the difference between right and wrong, or we say conscience in English a lot, the Holy Spirit speaks to us so that we know right from wrong. The second thing he does, when we accept Christ, there's what's called the indwelling. In other words, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. That's what we've already talked about as well. And then there's the sanctification. That's what Pastor Randy was talking about last week. That means the Holy Spirit's constantly working inside of you, inside of me, to make us more like Christ. And then that fourth work is called the empowerment. That's what I've been referencing already. In other words, that's when the Holy Spirit lives in us and then flows out of us to do the things that God has called us to do. You know, we're all in time to time where we could use God's power to help us. Just like when I was raising money to go on a mission field, that wasn't something I could do as an 18-year-old alone. That was a monumental task. I needed the power of God to help me in that situation. You know, we all go through hard times in life where we need to depend on the Lord to help us, where we need his power in us. And if God's given us a vision and a dream of what he wants to do with us, we have to rely on that power. The Apostle Paul, who he wrote more books of the Bible than any other apostle, and he's credited with bringing the gospel 
to Europe for the first time, to the Greeks and then to the Romans and everywhere else. He had a monumental task. And he understood this was something he could not do without the power of the Holy Spirit. In Corinth, when he went to this town of Corinth, one of the, uh, he faced one of the biggest challenges of his life when he went there to try to tell them about Jesus. So years later, when he's writing a letter to the Corinthians, check out what he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. He said, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but God's power. Paul understood that he couldn't do what God had called him to do alone. He understood that it was the Spirit of God working in him that allowed him to do that. So he's reflecting with the Corinthians. He'd come down from Athens, and he's in this town of Corinth, which was one of the most important cities in the ancient Roman Empire. It was a port city. And you can actually somewhat compare the culture of Corinth with what is Las Vegas today. So it's a, it's a port city. There's all these people going in and out. There's all kinds of, of um, prostitution going there, gambling, a very rough culture. Corinth was known throughout the Roman Empire as one of the roughest places there was. So Paul goes into this culture, and he's, he's first place he goes is to the synagogue. He wants to try to witness and tell the Jews about what Jesus had done. He'd gotten nowhere. In Acts, it talks about how Paul had been there for six months, and he was getting nowhere. But then he started to rely again on the Holy Spirit and the power in him, and people started getting saved. An amazing work happened there in Corinth in that very, very hard environment because Paul said, you know what? It's not about me and my words. It's not about what I'm capable of. It's about what God wants to do through me. Just like Paul, I believe very strongly that God has called each and every single one of us to do something for him. Some of us may not know what that looks like yet. Other of us may be starting to understand what God wants us to do. Other of us may still be going, may understand that and be pursuing it. But I think what God calls us to is bigger than what we can accomplish just by ourselves. In uh, 2 Peter 1.3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. See, God, if he wants us to do something big, he's going to resource us. And this is what we see right there, that whatever God has called us to, whatever we need, he has given us. And in that, he uses the, what we call the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowering us to do that work which he's called us to. Now, the gifts of the Spirit we're going to look at in just a moment. But it's not for us to look cool. It's not for us to feel all big and bad. It's to do what God has called us to do. There's a humility with that. It brings us closer to God. It's not just about us feeling good. It's not about us looking good. It's about making God look good. It's about loving people and doing what he's called. Now check out in this letter that he sent to the Corinthians. In chapter 12, he starts talking about what these gifts of the Spirit are. So just follow me as we go through this passage. In 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kind of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God and work. 
Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of that same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kind of tongues. And to still another, interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. So let's just break this down for a moment. That's, that was a lot. Okay? So we see a few things right here in this passage. First of all, at the beginning of that passage, we see that Paul wants everybody to know about the gifts. Not just the inner circle, not just the people who think that they've got it together. He wants the whole church to know about these gifts and that they're available to all of those who follow Christ. Second, we see that even though there, there are many different kinds of gifts, and there are other places in the Bible where Paul talks about even more than that, he says that they are from God and for the common good. In other words, God gives us these gifts. It's for everybody. It's one God, one set of gifts that he gives so that we can accomplish what he's called us to. So that we can do the ministry which he wants to equip us for. And then, of course, we see in that last part, we see him listing those gifts off. You see, he talks about a message of wisdom. Message of wisdom is when the Holy Spirit speaks a word of wisdom. Maybe you're talking to somebody at work. Maybe you're talking to a family member who's going through a hard time. And it's a complicated situation. It just, you don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit can give you the right words to say in that right moment. That's a work of the Holy Spirit through you. And a word of knowledge. Maybe again, you're in a situation where you just don't have the answer. The Holy Spirit can speak those words right to our hearts, right to our minds, and give us that thing that we need in that situation. Now, that's not coming from our own mind or our own ability, but it's the power of God working through us. Faith. Now, that one just sounds pretty ambiguous. But remember when Jesus at one point told Peter, if you have the faith of just the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. The Holy Spirit can work in us to give us that faith where when we pray, we can pray with confidence and we can pray and believe that God is going to work and that God is going to intervene. That kind of faith doesn't come from our inner selves. It comes from the Holy Spirit working through us, healing. We believe very strongly that God still heals today. It wasn't just the time when Jesus was on earth and when the apostles, but the Holy Spirit maybe wants to work through some of you guys to heal. And then miracles, all kinds of miraculous signs is what Paul calls it, where God wants to demonstrate his power tangibly to people to point and say, there is a God who is real. There is a God who loves you. There is a God who cares. And prophecy. Now, that one sounds like we're talking about fortune tellers and stuff like that. That's not at all what that means. In, in the Bible, prophecy, sometimes there was a prophecy of something that has to happen. But in the New Testament, we see prophecy is where God speaks through people to build up the church, to help them to grow, to help them to see what God has called them to do. And then you see where he says about distinguishing between spirits. We call that discernment. In other words, that helps us to know between right and wrong or knowing motives. Is this from the Spirit of God or is this from my flesh or is maybe this from Satan trying to pull us in this direction? And sometimes that's, as, as humans, that's a hard thing for us to know if this is from God or from Satan. Or maybe it's our own desires pulling us that way. The Holy Spirit can help us to discern between those things. And then they're speaking in tongues. Now this one, a lot of people have all kinds of ideas. Everywhere from this doesn't happen at all to... Everything else. Okay, let me just explain this really simply. 
Speaking in tongues is where the Holy Spirit prays through us. And it, sometimes it's been recorded as a known language. We see that in the book of Acts. But often it's a language that God gives us where we can pray through the Spirit to God when we don't even know what to say. Do you ever try to communicate with your spouse or maybe with somebody at work where it's just frustrating because you don't even know the right words to say? Or maybe you're feeling something really deeply and you don't even know how to explain it. It seems that language can find you to be able to communicate what you need to communicate. The Holy Spirit can use us to pray through us so that we can intercede for people, so that we can intercede to God. And then with the last one that Paul talked about, the interpretations of tongues. Sometimes God speaks through us through tongues when somebody is given an interpretation. In other words, God gives them what that means in your language. Now, that's a whole long list, and I just wanted to keep that really brief. I could spend weeks. We can break all these down really in depth and really look at what each gift looks like practically, how to seek after those gifts, how they're supposed to be used, all that kind of stuff. I just want to give an overview of that. But in general, we call this the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Again, as we've already said, this isn't just the Holy Spirit living with us, because the, ho the Holy Spirit lives in all of us who believe in Jesus. But this is a second work of the Holy Spirit with him coming out of us, where he works through us. And when we allow God's power to flow through us, it changes things. It helps us to be more effective at reaching others. Maybe it's a scary thing to talk to somebody about what God's done in your life. But we have the Spirit working through us. It gives us a courageousness and a boldness to be concise in what we're saying, to be able to be effective at reaching those who God's put in our lives. When we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us, it helps us to build the church up. In other words, it helps us to help one another to grow. It helps us to fulfill the church's mission of reaching people for Jesus. And it also helps to build us more into the per person that God has called us to be. When we work in the gifts of the Spirit, God also uses that to edify, in other words, work on us. It really does change the game for us when we're walking in his power. If we really want to take hold of what God has called us to do, what God has called you to do, what he's called me to do, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to experience the fullness of that. Just like Paul said to the Corinthians, it wasn't with my words that you came to know Christ. It wasn't me, but it was the power of the Spirit. And we see this example so many times in Scripture, even in the Old Testament. Moses, the guy who led the Israelis out of Egypt, he experienced the power of God when there was a bush. With God, we call it the burning bush. But the presence of God was in that bush, and he spoke to Moses. He experienced that presence of God. And then later on Mount Sinai, he experienced again the Spirit of God there. It changed Moses. Both of those experiences radically changed Moses. And he was able to lead three million people out of Egypt. From the most powerful country on earth, the Spirit of God got a hold of him, and it changed him. In the desert with three million people, he needed the power of God to be able to lead them. It changed Moses. Or Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, who denied Jesus three times right before he died on the cross. Okay, scared little Peter. When the Holy Spirit came on Peter, it changed Peter. He preached to a crowd and 3,000 people came to know Christ that day. Scared Peter preached in front of crowds, and that many people came. And then you see through the rest of the New Testament how Peter's life totally changed. You see where the Spirit worked through him to raise somebody from the dead, where he went all around and preaching and building the early church. The Spirit of God changes us and helps us to be effective in what God has called us to do. What has God called you to do? Has he called you to reach your workplace? Has he called you to reach your neighbor? 
Maybe he's called you to do a great thing in your community. Maybe he's given you a strong vision. You see something, an injustice. Maybe you see a great need and God's called you to work and make a difference in that. Can you really do it just by yourself? The spirit of God working through us changes everything. And it all starts when we say yes to God. We say, yes, God, I want more of what you have. We call that the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not about us. You got to remember that. It's not about us feeling good about ourselves. It's not about us being able to say, look at this power. It's about us saying, yes, God, you can work through me. Yes, God, I will do what you've called. It's about yielding ourselves. It's a very humbling experience when we submit to what God has called us to do, when we are working to accomplish his purposes. You know, sometimes this isn't something where people feel like they're worthy to receive. Maybe you just started your walk with Christ and you think, okay, this is something I've got to mature to. The Bible doesn't say that there's any prequalification other than following Christ. This is a free gift from God. It's not something you have to earn. It's not something that you've got to work up to. It's not a matter of spiritual maturity. It's a matter of asking God for it. We see that all the time in the New Testament where people accept Christ and then they ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God pours out his power on them. It may sound like a scary thing to some people. It may sound like a really cool thing to others. But regardless of where you're at, it's a free gift that God says, hey, I want to give this to you so that you can accomplish what I've called you to do. And on that same note, a lot of people do confuse that with spiritual maturity. They see somebody operating in the gifts of the Spirit, and they think, oh, man, that person must be so mature. They must be so deep in their relationship with Christ. It's not that that shows our spiritual maturity. That's a big deal in our walk with Christ, of course. But you've got to balance that with the fruit of the Spirit like we talked about last week. Because if we're just taking this power without balancing it with the fruit of the Spirit, that's where a lot of the weirdness comes in, if I can be honest. That's when it becomes more about us than it is about God. As we're growing in our relationship with God, as the Holy Spirit's working in us, the fruit of the Spirit should be showing that love, that patience, that joy, that self-control. Those fruits are what show our spiritual depth. This is another part of the, the piece. Does that make sense? We need to balance the work that God's doing in us with the work that he wants to do through us. And I think there's a reason that Paul, right in the middle of this part of Corinthians, where he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Spirit, right in the middle of that you see chapter 13, which we call the love chapter, where he basically says you can Have this power, but if you're not doing it out of love, it means nothing. Let your love for God be your motivation to seek the power of God. Let your love for other people be that motivation. Let your love for the vision that God has given you, what he's called you to, be that motivation to seek after that power which he wants to give you. Reality is we're all going to deal with hardships. No matter what God has called us to do, it's going to be difficult. We're going to have those mountain peak moments where it's just awesome, but we're also going to have those moments where it's in the valley and we really realize we cannot do this on our own. Doing what I do, I need to rely on that power. It can be tough when you're in ministry, but ministry is not the only tough thing, let's be honest. Whatever God's called you to do, in those hard times, we have to be able to rely on the Spirit of God Whenever we're pursuing that vision, we have to have his power. Imagine an impossible situation that you faced. How would have it changed if you had the power of God working through you? Imagine what you could be going through and how the power of God can change that. When we were in Austria doing missions work, the last place we were there, we had what seemed to be an impossible situation. 
the missionary support that we had had ran out. The economy had crashed here in the States. You know, we were a newly married couple who had recently moved to another city to start a youth ministry in a church. And all of a sudden, we're left with less than $300 a month to live on. That's not possible to pay rent, to have food, and all that kind of stuff on that much money. An impossible situation. We had to work hard, and it was one of the hardest times in my life where I deal, dealt with depression. I dealt with hopelessness. It was hard. But in that time, I knew I had only one thing I could rely on, and that was the power of the Holy Spirit. And we leaned on that power of God in that time. And let me tell you what, that time in our ministry was a time where I think we saw more fruit and more evidence of God worked than any other point in our lives. In this small country town where we came to invest, in this small country town with the small church we were working in, teenagers from that town started coming to our youth ministry. Teenagers started to accept Christ in that town. And by the time we left, to our knowledge, that what started with just a few teenagers in Brownau, Brownau, Austria, that church had the largest youth ministry in the whole country. That was not me. That wasn't Maggie. That wasn't us working together. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit can do when we allow him to work through us. And again, all we have to do is ask God for that. And tonight at Encounter Night, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth. Today, I just wanted to give an, an overview. And this is a lot of information. I had struggled to try to condense this. And, and I hope I didn't go too deep or too wide with, with any of it. This is a big topic. We want to delve into this a little bit deeper tonight. And we're going to give you an opportunity to seek that tonight at Encounter Night, to experience the fullness of what God has for you. I want to ask you guys to stand with me as we close out this morning. You've got to remember, first and foremost, God wants a relationship with you. God wants a relationship with you. He wants to develop you into the person he's called you to be. He wants to develop those fruits of the Spirit in you. Because he loves you like, you're, like a son and a daughter. But he doesn't want to just stop there. He wants to give you that gift of power. It changes things. I just want to ask you, do you want more? Are you okay with living the life that you have right now? Are you okay with your relationship with God as it is right now? Or do you want more? You want to experience more of what God has for you. If I could have everybody bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. You may be here this morning, and maybe you haven't taken that first step to start a relationship with God. Maybe this whole thing's new to you. Maybe you've walked away from that relationship. But remember the first thing, God wants a relationship with you. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter where you are. God wants that relationship with you. So if that's you this morning, first, before I do anything else, I want to give you that opportunity to step into a new relationship with God. If that's you, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come up front and do anything weird, but I want to pray with you before we go any farther. If that's you and you haven't experienced that relationship with God yet, just put your hand up, put it right back down in a second. Thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. Let's pray right now. Father, we thank you, God, for your love. We thank you that you sent your son, that we can have forgiveness of our sins and a relationship with you. God, right now, I thank you for those people who are responding to your call. Just pray this right along in your own heart. God, we invite you into our hearts. We invite you into our lives. We ask that you'd forgive us of everything wrong that we've done. We ask that we can begin a brand new, restored relationship with you. We pray that your Holy Spirit would empower us to live that life which you've called us. It's in the name of Jesus. Amen.
then I also want to pray for those of you who are in a relationship with Christ, that you'd experience that power of the Holy Spirit in your lives to be able to do that which he has called you to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the relationship that we have with you, God. Lord, we thank you that you're inside of us so we can communicate with you. We thank you that you're developing us into the people you've called us to be. God, this morning, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, that we won't be complacent, that we won't be okay with just what we have right now, but that you would give us a hunger and thirst for you. God, help us to live the life that you've called us, God. And we ask that you'd give us bigger vision, bigger dreams of what you want us to do. We ask that you'd give us the courage and the boldness to respond to that and to head in that direction. Lord, we speak against fear. We speak against discouragement and hopelessness. And God, we grab hold to you, to your hope, God, to your boldness, God, to your life that you give us. We submit ourselves and we yield ourselves to you, Father. And we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our prayer team's here at the front. If you're going through anything at all and you need to experience that power of God, maybe you need healing, maybe you have family issues, we want to pray with you. We want to lift that need up this morning. If you want to experience that power of God just personally, they want to pray for you as well. So before we close out, just join us as we worship for a few more moments and reflect on how much more do you want from God this morning?
questions about it, and that's okay. Yeah, I'll be available after if you have anything you want to ask. But pray about it. Look at what the scripture says, and seek that power that God wants to freely give you. We hope that you can join us tonight at Encounter at 6 o'clock. We'll have child care and everything provided. But we would want to take that time and worship God for who he is, and experience his presence this evening. We thank you for joining us today at Vive. We, we love to see how God works in people's life. That's what we're about. If this is your first time here, that's what we're about, is seeing God bring people to life. If you're here and you prayed that prayer earlier for the first time, we want you to also know that we want to help you grow in your relationship with Christ. We have a little green card in the, in the pocket in front of you on your seat just says what next has some great tips there's even a part you can detach and give it to us if we can help you in that relationship i want to encourage you to step out in faith and do that guys thank you for coming with coming here today thank you for joining us i want to wish you guys an awesome afternoon it's going to be a beautiful day enjoy that we hope to see you tonight otherwise we'll see you next time have a good one <laughs>